What's going on, everybody? Welcome to a Capital Hungry Psychology webinar on market confidence. This is going to be a part of our weekly psychology webinar library, also added to the educational webinar vault, but obviously, of course, more focusing on trading psychology. So the main reason why I wanted to do this webinar is not because um, of the fact that I think people don't understand what confidence is. It's because of more of the fact that I think people don't understand the very, very fine line between ego and confidence, okay? So I wanna be able to differentiate the difference between ego and confidence as statistically proven majority of retail traders, the 90% that lose and still continue to trade the markets, they're trading based on ego, based on delusion, wishful thinking, and it is artificial, which makes them very self-centered and always having a lack of accountability and a lack of responsibility, looking to blame their failures on other third-party events, whether it be some mentor, whether it be some signal chat they followed, some stream they were watching, blaming their broker, blaming their job because they weren't able to look at the charts or something. It is all ego-based thinking. Confidence is based on what is real and earned. It does not alienate us from others where ego does alienate us from others and really prevent growth. It puts a limit on how much you can really grow. Okay. <clears throat> so market confidence, a very fine line. It is a very thin line between market confidence and a negative ego. Majority of traders confuse confidence with ego due to poor expectations, lack of experience, and having some winning trades. Meaning a lot of people that we talk about that come into the retail trading space, including myself, <clears throat> they enter through the social media space. They get advertised through a friend to join some group or to check out some mentor, or they see some ads on Instagram or they see some influencers they follow on a social media platform, and they get extremely poor expectations of the industry that they are jumping into. They instantly think, based on what is being shown publicly, that trading is very easy, that trading just takes a little bit of learning, and you can make thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions of dollars, that you can have a huge inflation in your lifestyle, be buying all the supercars, going on vacations, buying mansions and so forth. All of this could not be further from the truth, but those influences mold a person's expectations where that, where as they walk into the door of learning about trading, as soon as they open the door, that's the first thing they see, right? It's not like when they open the door, the first thing they are being told or the first thing they are visually seeing is learning about risk management or learning about economics or learning about emotional control. No, all of that is thrown out the window. So the combination of poor expectations as well as those poor expectations is gonna lead into poor work ethic and not a proper plan of attack towards your journey. journey. So let me explain that a little bit more. <clears throat> you wanna learn how to trade and you jump into this industry of trading. You open the door to enter this market. All you see when you open the door is people making thousands of dollars, millions of dollars, no one taking any losses or showing any losses, people showing everything related to lifestyle and all the purchases they are making. It caters to the pleasure model of your brain. It tells your brain, hey, you can increase the quality of your life in a very fast and easy way, because look at all these influences around you. Now, this is gonna prevent you from diving deep into what you're actually supposed to be learning and what you're actually supposed to be taking advantage of down your trading journey. You're gonna neglect learning as much as you should be. You're gonna neglect um, increasing your skill set and so forth. So those poor expectations will lead to a lack of experience. And of course, anybody can take a winning trade. Ego comes from having a winning trade and thinking you are untouchable as greed comes into play. How many of us, including myself, when we first started trading or depending where you are in your trading journey, have been on a little bit of a win streak and you think this is it. You're going to go triple your account. 
You're going to go make some crazy money now. There's no way you can lose. Everything is going in your fashion. And then when that one trade comes into play, that's going against you and you're moving your stop loss, you're doubling down, you're over leveraging and it completely and it ends up completely destroying your profit. The reason why you could not close that losing trade, the reason why you removed your stop loss, the reason why you doubled down on that position, even though you may know it was a bad trade or you may know it was going to be a loss is due to ego, right? So when ego comes into play and you have a couple of winning trades, this is going to naturally change the chemical balance in your brain and, in, and give you a false sense of confidence, but really just increasing your ego. And as your brain is pushing you to go jump into the market more, because you have to understand our brain does not know when to stop. When it gets something good, it wants to keep having it. For example, the reason why a lot of people get fat is because they overeat a lot of junk and processed food. Yeah, sure, having some tasty food once in a while is perfectly fine, perfectly reasonable within good balance. But your brain doesn't know when to stop when you're eating those sugars or eating those chips. Even though from a logical perspective, you know you shouldn't really be eating two bags of chips in a sitting or eating a whole 12 pack of donuts unless you're gonna, unless you're gonna perform some physical activity to counteract those calories putting in that you're putting in. But in the moment when your emotions are taking over and you're feeding a craving and you're eating based on your desires, your ego and your emotions is going to have you keep running through that bag of chips. It doesn't know when to stop. Your brain thinks that this is the last bit of food left on the earth and there might not be food tomorrow, even though all of this is in abundance, right? Because your brain's still in that very a very uh, primal uh, survival mode when it looks at food, when it looks at eating and so forth. That's why overindulgence, overeating is such a major issue in the modern age because people don't know how to put that control factor on themselves. They just follow their brain, which wants to keep consuming as much food, thinking it's going into hibernation mode for the next week or year, right? Trading is very similar. Just because you may take a winning trade and have a couple of winning trades, doesn't mean you're some successful trader all of a sudden. If you allow that ego and greed to take over, your, your brain, even though you may have taken a winning trade, even though you could stop right there, even though your logical trading plan and blueprint says, hey, after a winning trade, one or two winning trades, I'm done for the day. Your brain is not going to allow that or want that naturally. It wants to keep getting that dopamine hit. It wants to keep feeling good. That will have you create false confidence and keep jumping into the market, eventually over trading and giving your profit back. And even worse than that, once you give your profit back, you might even lose more capital of your original principal account balance, <clears throat> right? So over trading and overeating really comes from the same root cause within your brain. It comes from a point of greed a point of ego, a point of never being satisfied because your brain, as simple as it is, just wants that continued feed. It just wants that continued dopamine hit. So anyone can take a winning trade, even by the chance of luck. And, and that does not solely represent trading skill because the market is probabilities of either going up or down. Essentially, you could have no knowledge at all I could, I could tonight just enter a random sell on gold and it does have the potential to play out. Does that mean that was a good trade? Does that mean there was any planning involved? Does that mean I know what is happening in the market or why? Of course not. But just because of those factors doesn't mean the trade cannot win. So a lot of people, they start to develop what is called gambler's fallacy. Even though they may overall be losing money, because of that addiction to the markets that can develop as you have this potential opportunity to make more money than you are putting in, what is, uh, what is created is called gambler's fallacy. People will overall be losing, but any little bit of a win gives them hope to continue on, gives them something to cope with. And this is commonly seen in casinos and why people will spend hours, if not days, stuck to a slot machine or stuck to some blackjack table or playing poker for hours or whatever it may be, right?
So winning a trade does not make you a good trader and losing a trade does not make you a bad trader. Consistency in either does. Consistency, consistently winning more than you are losing and overall profiting, whether it's small profit, large profit, $10, millions of dollars, I don't give a shit. That's what makes you a good trader. Consistently taking losing trades and your losses being larger than your wins, that's what makes you a bad trader. Not these one-off trades that can occur here and there, okay? If you lack market experience, a trading system, rules and goals, then most likely you do not have market confidence, but instead have a market ego, which we want to avoid. Ego is our enemy of success, right? Ego prevents you from growing. Ego prevents you from admitting when you are wrong. Ego prevents you from uh, learning from your mistakes and losses, which whether it's in business, whether it's in sport, whether it's in trading, all of that needs to be removed. You have to be very self-aware, very self-critical of when you are right and when you are wrong, knowing when you are doing something right and keeping that and keeping that going consistently and knowing when you are doing something wrong and removing that out of your behavioral pattern or out of your personality with proper training and repetition, right? So it's a very, very fine line between negative ego and confidence. But, it, but even though that line is very fine, it's very easy to differentiate the difference between ego and confidence. Confidence comes from a dependable set, a dependable and trustworthy set of skills that have developed over a period of time. Ego comes from emotion, comes from greed, comes from impulsive desire. Right. So confidence in the markets. Confidence can only be built on top of a trustworthy and dependable set of skills. These dependable set of skills need to bring you some type of success in the industry you want to take advantage of, which increases your confidence in the space. Right. Let's say, for example, you're going into real estate development or home renovations. You could learn about the skills to renovate a home. You could learn the ins and outs of what you need to do to flip a house, but until you actually take the action and risk of purchasing a beat down house, going through the renovation process, and then selling that house for a profit, you won't actually have any validation of your skills developed that can lead to confidence, right? Learning is not enough, as you need to take action on the knowledge learned. For example, you cannot confirm your skills in a sport unless put up against competition. Your, resu your results against competition is what validates your skills develop. In trading, the competition essentially is the market. This doesn't mean we're going up against the banks where it's like, oh, I beat the banks today, or I'm going up against JP Morgan. No. The validation of your skills is going to come from whether you are winning or losing more often times than not. The market is your validation, right? In this example I gave with sports, let's just say you're a basketball player. You spend all the time practicing in your backyard, practicing in the gym alone. You feel like you have developed a good skill set based on your emotions with all the practice you have put in. That's perfectly fine to feel that way and feel like you have developed your skills, but it's not confirmed until it's put up, it's, until it's put up to the test. For something like basketball, the test is going to be an actual live game. If in that game you end up losing, you end up having very minimal points, you're not contributing much to your team, you're letting your team down, well, clearly you need to go back to the drawing board because that feeling of confidence was invalidated. Your skills are not up to the par they need to be with the competition you are going up against. You cannot have any confidence in your skills there's no results coming from it, right? So the beautiful thing about trading is that as you start to develop your trading system, your knowledge, your insight, which turns into a uh, which turns into almost a code of what works for you and what doesn't work for you, dependent on your life, your personality, your schedule, and what's best for you. The market will validate whether that process and system is successful or not. 
You don't have to play any guessing games to wonder if you're a good trader or not, right? That's what the market is here for. The market is essentially our boss, our tester, our one who confirms whether we are good or bad, okay? So a singular win does not validate confidence, whether it's in sports, business, or trading. Um, a singular win does not validate skills, system, or strategy. Confidence comes, of, comes from repetition of skills with consistent results. Now, you might say, okay, well, I've had a good winning streak. I've been taking more winning trades for the last six months I've been winning. That's perfectly fine if now you can validate some confidence. But that doesn't mean you stop the process that developed your confidence. Another issue I find is as soon as people start to develop their confidence from an immense amount of work, trial and error, learning, seeing what works for them and what doesn't, following a plan, is that as soon as they start to find a bit of success, then they become lazy. The confidence can also be a double-edged sword where it starts to make you a bit more lazy in further developing your skills or maintaining your skills. A great example of this is when you look at some of the best athletes in the world, when you look at somebody like Kobe Bryant, with all of the success they have massed, all of the, all of the accolades under their belt through their basketball journey, when we're looking at the example of Kobe Bryant, even up until his recent retirement, he was still practicing in the gym like, he, like it was day one. He was still shooting his free throws, running through his drills, was one of the earliest people in the gym, one of the, late, one of the people who would late, leave the latest, right? This is somebody with global recognition in his skill set, somebody with years and years of accolades, somebody with a skill set in his industry that could be as refined as possible. So you could say somebody who clearly has confidence in their skills, Mamba mentality. Where do you think that came from? And even that person at the peak of their performance, at the peak of their industry, at the peak of their skill set, was still following the process that developed that skill set, right? So confidence comes and confidence also stays from repetition of skills with consistent results. If you start to find you are becoming confident, you are finding more consistency with your trading plan and your trading results are, benef are, are showing you a lot more um, profiting for you to take advantage of and enjoy. You can't allow that to make you become lazy because that confidence can be easily removed as it came back in. Because if you become lazy, if you start to slack, the market will say, hey, well, I guess that confidence is gone. And here you go. Here's your consecutive losses. Here's your account balance destroyed. Here's some emotional mistakes for you to deal with, right? So what I'm, trying to, what I'm trying to share with that point is confidence comes from repetition of skills, but also once you achieve that level of confidence, you shouldn't become complacent. You shouldn't just depend on that. You have to keep maintaining it, keep growing it through the remainder of your journey, okay? You must know how to lose to know how to win. It's like that old saying goes, you can't, really, you can't really enjoy the sunshine unless you've dealt with days in the rain. You can't really have true happiness unless you've dealt with true sadness, right? It's the yin and yang. It goes hand in hand. You must know how to lose to know how to win. Just having the good skills can only teach you about one side of the coin. But knowing how to lose and manage losses is just as, if not more important, as knowing how to win. This also plays a large role in market confidence. Um, when I was studying various success stories of entrepreneurs, real estate developers, uh, people who are developed uh, applications in tech and made billions of dollars, uh, investors, traders, and so forth, one of the most important one of the most important tips I took from across the board was not the issue of making money. It was the issue of keeping money, right? A lot of people, once they have developed their skills in a certain space, the money starts to flow in naturally. Whether you are learning how to flip homes, 
start a restaurant and start a business, trading and so forth. As your skills develop, the money coming in starts to become a lot more easier and natural and natural as it inflows, right? But if you don't learn the flip side of the coin on how to lose and manage losses, whether it be some inventory issue that occurs with your restaurant, whether it be something that was out of your expectations when you're flipping a home and it's going to cost you a bit more money, whether you're on a little bit of a losing streak in trading, if you do not have the emotional stability and logical approach to manage those losses effectively, it can become detrimental in impacting your wins and completely removing your wins, right? How you approach a loss and handle a loss in life is very, very important to how you continue to win, okay? So, con so what I'm trying to include here with the trading aspect is confidence doesn't just come from how many wins you have and how many winning trades you take. Of course, that's a contributing factor, but confidence also comes from how you manage inevitable losses that will happen in life and of course happen in trading. Not everything is gonna be how you look at it first by the book, right? When you look at trading by the book and what it's shown, it's like, oh, okay, even if I have realistic expectations, if I have a 50% win rate, if I focus on a one to three RR, if I do my trading plan ahead of time and do my pre-planned analysis, I, overall, I'll be winning in the long term. It's never that easy. Always in real time, whether you're going to go renovate a new house, whether you're starting up a brick and mortar business, there's always going to be problems that come into play that you did not expect, right? In trading, you could have planned everything perfectly, followed your analysis, and a news headline comes out or an economic data report goes against what you expected. Now what's important isn't the win you are looking for, it's how you're gonna adapt to that event, how you're gonna manage the potential loss. That's what becomes important. That's what's gonna grow your confidence in that type of situation, right? <clears throat> Removing ego. To start growing confidence, First, ego needs to be removed. Ego is a false sense of experience, skills, and confidence rooted from hope, false expectations, and emotional desires. We will never be able to, de to develop true confidence if ego always clouds our judgment or prevents growth. Let me give you guys a great example, right? Within trading. Most people avoid market fundamentals because it is so difficult to learn, even though it is the foundation of the financial markets. Ego, instead of admitting it is hard to learn, has most individuals say, oh, we don't need to learn this. It's useless. We can just do technicals, which ends up limiting their knowledge, experience, and understanding. Imagine wanting to be a chef, but instead of learning the fundamentals of cooking, you only want to follow a cookbook and other recipes because it's easier. This doesn't mean that you can't end up cooking dishes by following a cookbook, but will you really be the best chef possible if you don't even know the basic fundamentals of cooking, of spices, of flavor profiles, of what goes together, what doesn't, of cooking times, of the, you know what I mean? If you don't know the basic fundamentals, of cooking and you just wanna follow a cookbook and other recipes, yeah, you can still come out with some dishes. Yeah, you can still learn how to cook a few things here and here, but you will be nowhere close to a chef who has trained himself in the fundamentals of cooking. Nowhere close. Does everybody understand that, right? So what I'm trying to say is you don't have to learn market fundamentals or the basics of finance or economics to be a successful trader but it does increase your probability tenfold because it increases your knowledge. It increases your understanding. But ego stops people from learning about this because think about it. Technical analysis, whether people like it or not, whether they want to admit this or not, is very easy to learn. Technical analysis is all visual. It's all pattern recognition. It's shit that fucking children are taught in kindergarten how to analyze patterns. Does this shape fit into that shape? No, it doesn't. It's all visual, it's all visual patterns. Why do you think so many people 
gear towards learning technicals rather than learning the basic fundamentals of the market first. Because at the end of the day, whether people want to admit it or not, it's fucking easy. It's lines on a chart. It's drawings. It's visual pattern recognition, right? This is stuff that we have been taught since, since we were children. How to analyze patterns, how to do some visual analysis, how to make sure X matches with Y, how to see something that's happened again before. This is stuff you're taught as a kid, right? So when people come into trading, they want to go down that path and solely down that path because it's the easier path. Everybody learns about support and resistance, how to draw a trend line, how to mark higher highs and higher lows, how to see if something is bullish or bearish. That's all very, very basic stuff. It's all pattern recognition. But you're not taught as a child or through your life about economics. This is foreign to you. This is a new language. You're not taught about economic events, news reports, market sentiment, investor behavior, market cycles. Whoa, what is all this? That's all very foreign. That's like learning a new language. Now, when, when you come to think about it logically, it's like, hmm, I'm going to be trading financial markets, global financial markets. Maybe I should learn the foundation of what I am trading. When you're logically thinking, it's very simple. But when you're going from a position of false expectations and seeing that everyone's making very easy money around you, which is falsely promoted on social media, when you're seeing some retard influencer making millions of dollars buying a Lambo and he's just drawing lines on a chart, you're going to, your ego, your brain is going to say, hey, fuck that part of my language. Why should we bother learning that? It's going to be very hard. It's going to bring new stress to our brain. It's going to bring new tension to our brain. It's all foreign concepts. We don't need it. Right? Have you guys noticed that? When you ever, whenever you, besides Capital Hungry, when you look at other trading communities and you bring up fundamentals, people almost get offended. Oh, fundamentals are all wrong. Technicals because technicals come before fundamentals. Fundamentals don't matter. How many times have you heard traders say that? And then when it's an NFP report, they're not, they're not saying that. When it's FOMC, they're not saying that. When the when a when a, a fundamental catalyst comes into play like COVID or a trade war or Brexit or a real world war, they're not saying that. Right? How could you be so oblivious, so ignorant to say that fundamentals don't matter in the financial markets? You know how? Ego. They don't truly think that fundamentals don't matter. They don't truly think that technicals come before fundamentals. Their ego is just bringing fear to them. They're scared to learn about that stuff. It's new. It's foreign. They're, they're scared to learn it. It's nothing but fear. It's nothing but ego limiting their growth. Does that make sense to everybody? Right? I would say at least 60% of traders have no fundamentals, probably more, but I was being nice. And it is difficult to be confident without knowing what you are even trading or being scared to learn. How can you ever say you have true confidence in the markets when you were scared to learn the fundamentals of the markets? How can you say you have true skills in basketball when you were scared to learn the fundamentals of the game? How can you say you have true skills and confidence as a chef when you were scared to learn the fundamentals of cooking because it's intimidating, because it's new, because it's going to involve stress and tension? Guess what? You can't. You can't say you're a true confident chef. You can't say you're a true confident basketball player. You can't say you're a true confident trader because you don't because you don't even have that base knowledge that you were building upon. Right? And the majority of these people who say that oh fundamentals don't matter, this isn't needed, that's stupid, right? You never see me with all the focus I have on fundamentals. Do you ever see me say, "Oh, technicals are stupid?" Do you ever see me downplay an aspect of trading? Oh, we don't need psychology. That's stupid. We don't need technicals. That's dumb. Why would I ever limit myself? Why would I ever put a wall or a ceiling to prevent my growth, to prevent me from moving forward? That would only come out of if I had fear of those concepts. 
right? And 90% of traders lose, but they keep trading due to ego caused by gamblers, fallacy, and hope. So 60% of traders, I would guesstimate, have no knowledge on the markets. 90% of traders keep losing. You don't see a correlation here between ego and losses. It's very evident. It's right in front of our eyes, right? So tips to remove ego. Always open to learning, even if it may be intimidating. Listen, certain, certain fields within our society, like let me give you some examples. Even if you're an electrician or if you're a uh, plumber, yeah, you might enjoy learning how to wire a home, the ins and outs of uh, how, to, how to get some electricity going into an industrial plant, how to do all of that stuff. But I guarantee you're not going to enjoy learning the code book. You're not going to enjoy learning that 5,000 code, 5,000 page code book, which is all legal jargon, but you have no choice. You're forced through the process of becoming an electrician to learn those fundamentals, to learn those rules, to learn those regulations as it's a part of the job. It may not be the most enjoyable part of the job. It's not the hands-on part of the job, but it's a necessity. Do you understand what I'm saying? You may, you may want to become a lawyer. You may look at the, all the glory and glam of being a lawyer, of wearing your fancy suit, going to court, being like the show suits and shutting down the judge in a case and winning the case, making hundreds of thousands of dollars, having a fancy car. But guess what? The fundamentals of law is meant to be confusing. You guys ever seen a law book? You ever seen the, the language they use, the code they use? It's difficult for a reason. Without those fundamentals, you can't pass the bar exam. There's structure there. There's, there's rules, regulations, structure to become a lawyer. There's rules, regulations, structure to become an electrician. There's rules, regulations, structure to become a doctor. Within trading, there's not rules, there's not regulations, there's not structure, it's all dependent on you. So in, in law, you would never ignore the fundamentals of learning law, learning the code because it's needed for your job. As an electrician, you would never ignore the code book of what you need to follow code because as much of a great electrician you may be, if you're going to somebody's house and you do something that's not up to code, guess who's getting in shit? Guess who the liabilities are? If that house catches on fire and it's electrical fire, guess who's losing their license, losing their practice, losing their business? all because of negligence. Well, in trading, if you, don't hold, if you don't know the basic foundations of trading and basic fundamentals, guess who has a higher probability of negligence in losing their trading account? Fundamentals just isn't economics. Fundamentals is market psychology, risk management, emotional management. All of those are fundamentals, the basics of trading. People think fundamentals is just news because they're retards. They don't, they're scared to go dive into to even see what fundamentals are. Fundamentals are the basics of any industry you're going into. Does that make sense to everybody? You could say technical analysis is still a part of your market fundamentals. Does that make sense to everybody or no? Right? So tips to remove egos. You're always open to learning, even if it may be intimidating. That's the first step. Anything new you're going to learn or you're going to experience or you're going to get involved in, unless you're an individual with that type of personality that has no fear, you're going to be intimidated. You're going to be scared. You're not going to know what the fuck you're doing at first. But that's, the, that's how our brains begin. You know what I mean? We are all students of the game forever. Kobe Bryant, even as much of a master of the game he became for basketball, he still said he was a student of the game and will always be a student of the game, right? Now, understand you are not special or gifted in any way. Unless you have some type of high gifted IQ as a child, unless you have some type of photographic memory, we are all the same. We are all human with the same brain and emotions that need to be developed, trained, and programmed. If we don't, our brain becomes useless to us. Okay? 
Do not compare your journey to anyone else and focus on your process. Understand until you bring information in your brain that it is dumb and useless. If I didn't learn all this stuff, I, and I say this about myself, my brain in trading would be dumb and useless because people get offended when you say this because of ego. But it's true. If I come to you and you never studied the markets and I start asking you questions about the markets and you have no clue, no shit you have no clue. You can't be angry about it. Only your ego allows you to be angry. I'm not dumb. I, I just don't know this yet. Exactly, right? So a lot of people, when I call them dumb, they get offended because they just hear the word. Their ego comes in, triggers, and goes, fuck that. I'm not dumb. Look, I'm trying to learn about trading. No, you're not trying to learn. You're just involved in the space. You're not actively bringing information to your brain, right? We all start at level zero. For example, I have, I have zero understanding on how to run a restaurant, right? If I, uh, if I right now develop the passion or develop the idea that, hey, you know what? I want to take a risk and I, want to, and I want to open a restaurant. This is something I want to do. I can't have the ego and expect I'm going to go open a successful restaurant. Expect I already know the ins and outs because I fucking watched MasterChef a few times on TV. No, I have to remove my ego and say, all right, for this industry, for this for this uh, business of starting a restaurant, I'm, I'm personally starting at level zero now. I should go learn the ins and outs of what makes a successful restaurant, what makes a restaurant fail. I should go learn the ins and outs of what I need to bring in to have a successful restaurant. How do I do inventory? How do I do the accounting? How do I set up the aesthetic of the restaurant? Everything starting from level zero, right? I can't come in there with the ego saying, well, I've seen how some restaurants run. I've seen this, I've seen this TV show before of how, about restaurant takeover. I've seen that my friend has a restaurant. He makes it look very easy. This should be no problem at all. I'll just go with the flow and go and see how it goes. You're going to fucking lose. You're going to fail. Right? So understand we're all starting at level zero and that's where your journey begins within any industry. You're trying to develop your skill set in. You have to start bringing in information and value into your brain, starting to increase your levels, okay? 10,000 hours is roughly needed in a skill to be proficient. That's eight hours a day, five days a week. If you put eight hours a day for five days a week, it would still take five years to have 10,000 hours. How crazy is that? That's 10,000 hours in trading, 10,000 hours um, whatever it may be, if you're learning how to invest in real estate or, to, or flip homes, if you're starting to open a restaurant, if you're starting a business, right? That's why they say that majority of businesses, when they start, fail within the first three years. You're not actually considered a successful, a successful business unless you've been alive and profiting for over three to five years. Then you can say your business is successful it's sustainable, it's consistent. But if you start a business and within the first three years it fails, that's actually normal, right? It takes 10,000 hours of consistent work to be needed in a, skill, to, in a skill to be proficient. Why do you think that these, child, uh, that these parents who want their children to be professional athletes put them in training since the age of five to 10? Have them training from the age of five to 10 until they're 15, 16, 17, then going into even more intensive training. It's for the hours needed to be at the top elite level of that skill set. That's why there's such a low probability for the kids who want to finally get into a sport and be great when they're like already age 16, 17, 18, 20 years old. It's not, po it's, it's, it's not possible that they can't find success but the probability against the competition where the competition has been training since they're five fucking years old, it's way lower. Does that make sense for everybody? Right? Because you're not just trying to play some sports in college. You're not just trying to play some sports in your local park. You're trying to play sports at the most elite level around the globe. So more than 10,000 hours is gonna be needed. That's why you have kids from the age of five to 10, they already put in 10,000 hours, 5,000 hours of work. 
10 to 15, 15 to 20 and the work never stops. These athletes never stop training. They never stop growing. The good athletes, the world, the globally elite athletes, right? Look at some of these businessmen you see. Jeff Bezos, he took, he took, uh, he took Amazon to a billion dollar company worth trillion dollars now, right? Why is he still doing what he's doing? Why is he still trying to make more money? Why is he still working on more ventures? Because it never stops. Elon Musk, you had PayPal, you had Tesla, you had SpaceX, you made billions of dollars. Why are you still working on more projects? Why are you still trying to learn more? Why are you still grinding so many hours a day, sleeping in some little shack he sleeps in for like four hours? Why is he still doing that? It's because the ego is removed. They're fully passionate about what they do. Money's just become a, a, a huge byproduct for them. Right? Do not fear challenging your beliefs and bringing stress and tension to your mind. A lot of our beliefs, a lot of our viewpoints on life have been developed through our growth from children to where we are now, through our experiences through our family, through our schooling and what we learn through school and our jobs. Just because those may be our beliefs doesn't mean it's right or doesn't mean it's going to help us grow. Some people have a lot of beliefs or a lot of uh, influences from their family that they believe in, but it's very limiting to them. Let me give you guys a great example. A lot of people within North America and within the society in North America or parts of Europe have gone through this belief system from their family and society that they have to go through school, that they have to get a nine to five job. And that's one of the only ways that they can sustain their life and be quote unquote successful because that's what their parents did. That's what their grandparents did. And all of those beliefs, all of those ideologies have been handed down to them. So you could have an individual who has such a strong entrepreneurial spirit who has so much ambition, who is a risk taker and wants to go try things, who has the potential probability to be a very successful businessman, but based on their beliefs, based on their upbringing, they will never even venture out into that path because the ones they look up to told them don't do that. Does that make sense to you? Sometimes your beliefs, even though it's your beliefs, even though it's your parents' beliefs, in reality can be limiting your success. It can be limiting your opportunity. It can be limiting your potential for growth. Right? So, so don't, I'm not saying change your beliefs, but do not fear challenging your beliefs and seeing what else can you do with your life and, and the opportunities that can, it can bring you. And don't be afraid of bringing stress and tension to your mind. The same way muscles in your body grow and you develop your physique, is through stress and tension of the muscles, contracting and expanding them, breaking the muscle fibers down so they can build back stronger again, become more dense, stronger, better shaped. This is what makes a physique, right? Your brain is no different. Your brain, even though obviously it's an organ, it's still treated as a muscle. Your brain needs to be trained. Why do you think you go through this schooling system that trains you to be a worker? that trains you to come to school on time early in the morning, to follow bells of when to go for lunch and to break, to follow a bell of when to go home, to do all of your tasks given, that's brain training. Why do you think at work, no matter what job you get, you get trained on the job? That's brain training, right? The same type of training to your brain is needed within the markets. This type of training, bringing in new information, is going to bring natural stress and tension to your mind. You're challenging your mind where your mind naturally just wants to keep everything as easy and as, and as simple as possible. Because your brain's only goal is to make it from day one to day two, survive. But nowadays in the modern society, survival is not an issue. Survival is not something that is a primary focus for human beings anymore. We are so far away from survival, but our brains don't know that. That's why people overeat. They eat so much because the brain thinks there's not going to be food tomorrow. That's why people stay so comfortable and relaxed because the brain doesn't want to bring any risk to your life. 
but we're in a society so far away from the risk of death and, and the risk of uh, not being able to survive, right? You're not out in the wilderness. You're not trying to go hunt for your food. You're not trying to look for a shelter for the night to keep you safe from the weather conditions. We're all safe from that. So we have to train our brain to take risks. We have to train our brain to bring new stress and tension and say, this is okay. I'm learning something new. I don't understand it. It's causing me a headache. Okay, that's fine. That's normal. That doesn't mean I'm going to stop learning now just because I got a headache or I feel a little bit stressed or my neck is tense. This is a normal part of the process. Does that make sense to everybody? Ego will tell you that as soon as you're learning something and you get a headache or you feel stress and tension, put that shit away. You don't need it. Fuck, fuck fundamentals. Screw learning about psychology. Screw learning about risk management. You don't need any of that. It's hard. That stuff's hard. Go back to just marking lines on the chart. That's easy. Of course, your brain is going to push you towards that stuff. Your brain, want to keep, your brain wants to keep everything as simple as possible, and your ego is going to support that. Right? Building confidence. I've gone through this a million times. First, learning. Bring knowledge into your brain to transform into usable skills. Then trial and error. Process of seeing what works, for, what works best for your personality and life. Then planning the blueprint or game plan of your trading, then execution, win or lose, taking action on your insight and planning for results, right? What you would hope for and what you are planning for is that with the proper learning, the proper trial and error and proper planning, your execution should lead to overall success. Meaning if you learn how to do efficient analysis, if you learn how to mark out proper trade ideas, if you learn how to focus on risk management of a positive risk versus reward of one to three or higher, if you keep your win rate at 50% or higher, then at the end of that con then at the end of that logical learning and planning, your execution over a period of time should net you overall results, positive results. Those positive results fueled by these three concepts is what builds your confidence right? Knowing that you spent the time to learn and bring new knowledge to your brain, taking that knowledge and converting it into insight, seeing what works for you and what doesn't, creating a plan of action around that insight, and then executing on that and seeing that it brings you results, that's what's going to bring you confidence. If you are looking to renovate a home and you learn the ins and outs of renovating a home, you hired a team to work with you, you planned your blueprint of how you're going to take everything down and rebuild it again, you follow that plan and now you put it on sale and you end up making a profit. That, that whole process is what grows your confidence in renovating and flipping homes. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you are learning how to play basketball and you're learning the ins and outs of the game, then you go through the trial and error of like, you know what? I'm more of a three point shooter. I'm more of somebody who's better in the paint and playing the close mid range game. You see what works for you. Then at your actual game, you follow your game plan of how to work best with your team. And then you end up winning the game and you score a high amount of points following your knowledge and trial and error of what works best for you and your team. That's going to grow your confidence in the sport of basketball. The knowledge you learn, the skill sets you amassed, seeing what works for you and what doesn't, sticking to that, refining your weaknesses, developing your strengths, following the game plan, that leading to a win. That's confidence, right? The same thing in trading, right? How can you ever say you have confidence in your trading skill set if you don't even have the basic knowledge or insight? How can you say you have confidence in your trading skill set if you're not following any plan or blueprint towards your success? You can't. Right? So the confidence strategy is nothing but the capital hungry process. Insight. Take the time to sponge up as much knowledge regarding trading as you can to know what is right versus wrong and what works for you best for your risk adversity levels, for your financial background, for your personality, for your lifestyle. Remember, there's people in capital hungry who are 18 years old. And I think the oldest member in capital hungry is 65. You have people who are going through college, 
You have people who have working no job at all. You have people with full families and other dependencies, right? You have to go through the knowledge base provided in Capital Hungry, the, the um, information about what trading style is best and how it works and adapt it to your life. We are all living various different lives, right? Some of you may able, be able to scalp New York every day. Some people can't because of their job, because of their responsibilities. Some people love to scalp, but they have to adapt to a day trading style because of their responsibilities, because of their other, um, other influences in their life, right? So take the time to sponge up as much knowledge regarding trading as you can to know what is right versus wrong and what works for you best. Action. Turn the knowledge into insight and the insight into plans that you can take action on for results. Your analysis, your risk management, your probabilities, your trade ideas, this is all your action coming into play. You do your analysis based on the insight of what you have learned on the trading pair that you're focusing on. You analyze your risk management ahead of time of what you're willing to lose for whatever you're willing to win. You assess the probabilities of your trade idea based on the analysis. You set up your trade idea and you execute. Repetition, continued action of plan and knowledge with successful results over a period of time is true confidence in your skills, okay? Our goal in Capital Hungry, number one, removing ego. Remove the fear of learning, impulsive emotional decisions, comparison with others, false pride, and focus on building from the ground up. How many times have you guys heard me say in Capital Hungry and bring this to the table of I hate when people share random trades after the fact. They don't share any analysis. They don't share any value. They just come to share some profit they made to a community to fuel their ego. That's nothing, that's nothing but useless content. It's empty. It's useless. It holds no value. And all it's doing is feeding the individual's ego. Now, the reason why people do this is because within the trading communities in space, that is what is normalized. Remember, people come into trading with false expectations, thinking that losses don't happen, thinking that they need a 90% win rate, thinking that it's very easy to flip and triple accounts, thinking that they're going to make hundreds of thousands of dollars in a short period of time. So they don't have any process they're following in these other trading communities and services. The process is get dumped into the community, follow some cookie cutter course, and now all the members of the community just share random nonsense with each other, sharing random trades after the fact, random demo profits, random memes, and that's about it, right? In Capital Hungry, there's no point of that. Nobody gives a shit about that. I don't give a shit if somebody comes and shows a thousand lot trade and they made $5 million on some trade after the fact. Why would I care? You think I'm impressed by that? Are they gonna give me half the profit? If not, I don't give a shit. What I would give a shit about, about somebody who is focused on actually developing my skills in trading is somebody sharing some analysis ahead of time, saying, hey, I see that GJ can do this because of these X, Y, Z reasons. This is my main bias. Me, as the viewer, as another member of the community, can look at that and learn something from it, collaborate with it, give in my two cents. Then that same person can also reflect on that information. Now, that person who's done that analysis, when they execute based on that analysis, I don't care if they win or lose. Of course, I would prefer having them win and their analysis playing out, but that's not the purpose. The purpose is them following up with the process right? Then that also shows people and viewers in the community, okay, this person did analysis. This was their reason for analysis. This was their execution. This was them taking that winning trade. This whole process makes sense. I understood their ideology. They're using some of the capital hungry concepts on top of something else that works for them as well. They included that in there. They executed the trade one. Next time they executed the trade loss, but they also trade manage using proper risk management, accepting the loss. Wonderful. So much to learn from that, whether it's a winning analysis or a losing analysis. So much to talk about, to collaborate, to learn from, right? 
What are you going to learn from somebody sharing a trade after the fact, after it's 100 pips in profit, when they're too scared to talk about it when it was 10 pips in profit, when they're too scared to talk about it when it's time to enter, when they're too scared to give anything ahead of time? Do you think that they're trading based on confidence or are they trading based on ego? You think they shared that result based on confidence to share the process or are they sharing it based on ego? Right? It's all ego. And a lot of people, they have a problem differentiating a winning trade and following a process from them just, from them just having a win that's influenced by ego. If your winning trade was actually influenced by a process, by a system, by your skill set, you would have shared analysis ahead of time. Is that not true? True or false? You would have shared that trade idea to a trading community ahead of time. Right? In Capital Hungry, nobody gives a shit about how much money you're making, about how many wins you have, about how many losses you have. Of course, we want other members of Capital Hungry to be winning more than losing. But nobody cares about it as much as you care about it. You're going to care about yourself more than anybody else's. So you trying to impress others, trying to make yourself look good, sharing a trade after the fact is absolutely useless to anybody else. Right? So our goal, remove ego. Next, promote productivity. In Capital Hungry, we do not care about trades after the fact or the amount of money someone makes. I don't care if you're trading penny lots. I don't care if you made $1 profit. I don't care if you made a million dollars in a singular trade. I personally could give less of a shit. I care about the value being shared in a trading community and group. If you just want to show off profits, send it to your mom. Send it to your mom. Show your mom and dad. They'll be proud of you. Then give them some money too for being your mom and dad. Otherwise, nobody in a trading community is really going to give a shit. Okay? And I want to develop individuals' confidence. Following the capital hungry process is the first step to removing ego and walking towards confidence. Okay? So thank you, everybody. Just a quick, nice, short, and sweet little psychology webinar there on market confidence, but mainly differentiating the difference between ego and true confidence and what makes up both and why. All right? And I'm going to say right now, a good 80% of individuals in Capital Hungry, they do not have true confidence yet. They have ego. That's what's preventing them from reading a manual that they received. That's what's preventing them from learning about fundamentals or thinking they just need to learn one, one concept. That's what's preventing them from taking notes, from putting in more work ethic and effort. It's nothing but ego. And ego won't take you far. All right? So I'm going to save and upload this. I'm just going to be setting up the rest of the weekly flow as this is saved and uploaded. And then we'll do a weekly recap and refresher webinar.